everyone welcome to watch it paint it today we're painting a figure can you guess which one from the zombie side green horde by simon games um, i'm going to start by showing you how i prime these models this is using the color primer necrotic flesh by the army painter give this a good shake a couple of minutes before you use it and then from about 30 centimeters away you just want to apply light strokes side to side make sure you start spraying off the model just in case some blobs blurt out and you want to do them not on the models. Get the, get the flow going and then move across the models in nice smooth motions, giving it a nice light coat. After I did that, I brought the model inside. Under close examination, I started realizing this wasn't the best sculpt I've ever seen from Simon. I mean, the sculpt's okay, but it's joined together quite badly. So here you can see those join lines where the, the arm's being glued to the model. There's also some mold lines on the model as well, which I just didn't notice to begin with. So I'm gonna take my file and then realize what I need is a scraper. So whip out my scraper, and I'm gonna run this along those mold lines and just sort of scrape them off really. So you can do this with a knife, a, a crafts knife, an exacto blade, or a scalpel. I, I use a scalpel myself, but I've also got this tool, which is just a sharp piece of metal. So this is really, really good at remo removing those mold lines. Just wanna, Slide it along, finding all the nooks and crannies. It's got a really sharp point as well on the on the tip, so you can get in any sort of corners and things like that. After you've done that, I'm just going to use a file. These are miniature model files, and this is just to smooth down those the scrapings where I've done it. Sometimes it's left it a little bit flat. Sometimes it's just it's not quite as smooth as I'd like it to be. So I'm using this file. It's a round file, so I can get in between fingers, things like that, in between all those folds on his um, skirt thing. And once I'm happy with how I've got the model to look, I'm going to use some Citadel's liquid green stuff. You can get this in not the liquid form, just the green stuff, and you sort of make it yourself. And this is a sort of modeling putty. So I'm going to be applying this just with a, a cheap old paintbrush. And I'm going to be pushing this inside that, that join, that gap that was between his arm and his chest. So I'm just scooping it out of the tub and pushing it as hard as I can, sort of in with the brush. And then I'm going to smooth it over and get some lots and lots of water on my brush and basically just make that a really smooth finish a between in the gap between the two pieces and you, you can get your brush nice and wet and sort of just blend blend it basically like a paint across the rest of the model so it's nice and even and smooth and it will just cover that joint you might need to do this a couple of times because as it dries it um what's the word compresses mm, it retracts it, it it shrinks so you might have to do it a couple of times i had to do it twice and then this is just a bit darker green because I was testing it with paint as well, just making sure once the paint applies, there's basically no gap. And I was happy with it. And I did both of his arms. You can see I did the underside there on that side as well. And then once that was done, I handed over to Benson and he started painting the model for us. So he's going to do he's going to do the majority of the work on this model. So let's watch what he does. And don't forget at the end of the video to big up Benson, give him a thumbs up, drop him a comment below if you enjoy his work today. He's going to be using orc skin. That's from Zombie Side Green Horde, the Green Horde set by Army Painter. And we're going to try for the remainder of these videos, paint just using the Black Plague and Green Horde set just to show what you can achieve. So you can see Benson even here is using the free brush that you get in that set. Just trying that out. I'll get him to leave some feedback in the comments and let us know what he thought of that brush. Hopefully using just these colors will be nice for newbie painters, people looking to get into this, just be able to see if they can achieve what they can achieve just using those two sets. Obviously, if you've got more paints, you can mix and match here, use colors that are similar or change it if you want the model to look slightly different. So he's using that orc skin and that's to cover all of this abomination's skin. It's quite a dark green, but we're gonna to choose to do the abomination quite dark. The fatty is quite dark. We're gonna do the walkers as a sort of bluey, bluey color and then the goblins are going to be a pale pale color and that's hopefully going to help distinguish which models which as we as we playing play the game on the board it's going to be using wolf gray and that's for the abomination skirt around the bottom uh, still using the armor painter's brush i think he does the whole model just with this brush so we definitely want to get some feedback this is just a hobby brush so it's not even their sort of inverted commas middle range or pro range or anything like this i think this is the entry level brush uh, so it'd be fantastic to hear how well that does the next color in use is the crushed skull this is just a slightly off white it's very similar to brain matter beige from the modern sets which i also have so i could have just used that here and 
it's similar to probably quite a lot of colors. I think it's quite like bone white by Vallejo, that sort of thing. And it's just to give the base coat of the, the, the sort of bones that are down his back and all of these spikes that are sticking out of his body. He's also got a load of skulls on his waistline and a couple on the side as well, I think. And then he's got all of his big claw fingernails as well. Next, we'll be using the rough iron. This is, again, in the new Green Horde set. Uh, it's a it's a colour you can just get from Army Painter standalone as well. I already have rough iron. I quite like this. This is a really, really dark metallic. So Benson's going to be painting some parts of that, like the, the top shoulder strap uh, padding armour there. Then it's Pale Flesh. That's the pinky, very similar to Toxic Boils from the modern day set. And that's for his tongue and the inside of his mouth. Machine Gun Metal. So this is from the older modern day set, but Benson thinks you could mix this using Claymore Blade and Necromancer Cloak. So that you, you're going for quite a dark metal here. He didn't want it as dark as Rough Iron. He didn't want it bright like Claymore Blade. And I just happen to have Machine Gun Metal. So I cheated a little bit here. But if you if you don't have that Claymore Blade and mix in a little bit of sort of black, a dark color, just mix it until you get, get it to look a little bit darker. But if, if you've got Machine Gun Metal or a dark silver, that's probably best to use there. Leather Brown from the Black Plague set. This is to paint on. He's got some sort of leather padding on, on one of his elbows, as well as some straps coming off that and a couple of ropes. And then on his other arm, he's, he's also got a couple of ropes. And round his waist, he's got his belt. And then we've painted in a little bit of leather hanging between his legs as well. He's got some metal down there and a little bit of leather just to mix it up. We're going to use Plague Skin. And Benson's choosing to paint... On, He's got two piles of skulls. He's got one on his left leg and one in the center. And two of them are sort of less skull-like, more face-like. So Benson's used play green there to make it look like a bit of a rotting flesh sort of dead head on it. <laughs> it's quite alarming, I guess. He's also using crushed skull there into painting those wraps around his legs. Then he's going to be using orc skin and goblin skin. They're both from the new green horde set, mixing them about 50-50 and blending his fingers. It looks in the artwork like his fingers are a lot lighter than the, the rest of him. So he's just doing both hands and blending that towards his palm. Crushed skull, just out, as I mentioned, to painting those nails as well. He's obviously missed a few there or touching them up after applying the paint to his to his fingertips. And with this, th this is the end of the base coat. That's that's the this pretty. There's only a few colors. He's quite simple. The base coat is very, very, very easy. And then after that, we're gonna move on to shading it, adding some washes going to use the deep shader in in the uh, black plague set and that's just going to be to cover everything except for his skin and the um the skirt his skirt so we're not going to shade his skin at all if you would you paint him lighter if we'd have painted him in sort of plague skin or something i'd advise using that new horde shader to darken down the green but because his skin was so dark to begin with we didn't want to darken it down anymore so that's the end of the shading and we're on to highlighting and we're going to be using the crushed skull again to bring it in those whites back to color so after we've applied the the shade that deep shade we're going to just paint in the tips of his finger fingernails sort of re-highlight up all the edges of that spine running down his back and then paint again just similar to the the tips of his fingernails the tips of all of those spikes that are sticking out of him he's also got some bones on his right arm at the top so just highlighting those back up and then all those skulls around him as well just giving them a bit, a bit of a highlight so just going back to the skin the reason i mentioned painting it lighter is we just we're not sure if we like this it's just a little bit too dark so just bear that in mind as we're going through we we, we felt like this was a lot of lot of green and a lot of really dark green and it sort of didn't stand out amazingly well on the table so let's see by the end how we go and what we try and do to fix that he's going to be using claymore blade and just dry brushing that so that's the light silver in the black plague set and he's just brushing that over that rough iron that really really dark one just giving it a little bit of shine on the edges and the tips of those spikes he's then going to use elf green which is just ever so slightly lighter than the orc green which is fantastic you don't have to mix any colors you've got two colors and you can start upping the highlight just just using those two colors alone so he's going around and he's painting all the individual muscles just painting the bulk of the center of those masses just making it look like they've got a sort of shade shadow around the edges where they all join in in the recesses but we haven't used any shade we don't need to leave the shade in there you're just leaving that orc skin 
colour in those recesses between his toes, under his shin, and anywhere anywhere that you'd normally have shade, just leave the orc skin in there and just highlight on all the raised parts. Then after that, we're going to go on to highlighting the skirt, and his Benson's going to be taking wolf grey, mixing in a tiny bit of crushed skull, about 20%, just, just lighten it up ever so slightly, and he's going to be painting on all the massive folds. This monster's so big, <laughs> the folds in his clothes are massive. He'll, he must need a massive iron to, to get rid of all of these creases. And frankly, I think he's a little bit lazy around the house and hasn't been doing his ironing. So there's lots and lots of folds, lots of creases in this to paint. And because it's so big, it's really, really easy to do. And you've got a lot of area to work this highlight into. So you're going to be able to highlight this up several times because because the folds are so wide, you're going to be able to build up these layers. Make sure the, the paint's plenty watered down so it's quite thin and we can put it on top of each other over and over. So then after that, you want to mix in some more crushed skull, just make it a little bit lighter, about 35% this time. These numbers are not exact in case you were wondering. It's just sort of judging it by eye. Go with what you feel. I would personally start with the wolf grey on one side of your palette, the crushed skull on the other, and blend in some colours, mix them together, stepping from that darkest blue to the to the lightest you want to get to, which is probably about 50-50, and just have a couple of steps in between that which you, you're happy to step up. So here we are, we're on the 50-50. This is the lightest colour Benson's going to highlight, and this is on the very, very most raised bit, the very edges of each of those folds, just catching it with the side of the brush you can see in the video here. Uh, along the rim above his belt as well. That, that bit's quite crucial. I definitely recommend doing that. You can mostly, because that's so thin, skip all the other highlights and just do the final highlight along the belt, save you risking drawing a nice blue line across the across the abomination's belly uh, during any of the other steps. Just leave it to the last one and you'll have the same effect without having to paint the same bit three times. He's then going to do basically the same using elf green and the goblin skin, mixing that about 80-20 here, just lightening up that elf green and painting in more of the muscles, just the, the more raised parts making it lighter. That's quite weird, mixing in the elves and the goblin skins together. Would they be able to breed? I don't know. I don't think so. And I would be scared of the creations they would make. But with paint, they mix perfectly well and you can get a lighter colour. The yellow's not, it allows you to mix higher quantities when it's yellow with green, you can mix them together. It's gonna change more subtly. You could just use a white or a much lighter color, but you're gonna wanna use a, a much smaller percentage of a brighter color. And I've, in my experience, find it more tricky. It, it can it can jump really quickly. 20% white here would be a vastly brighter color of skin. Just like with the wolf's gray on the skirt, just mixing a little bit more of the lighter color, a little bit more goblin skin here, about 70 to 30%, and it's just gonna make a slightly lighter color. Again, it's all very, very watered down. It's just gonna be building up those layers just on top of the previous color, all the same places, slightly more central. Each time, moving your brush more central in each part of the muscle, leave sort of trying to blend all of these colors from the outside of the muscle to the peak in the middle. And that's what you're gonna to to do, just add a little bit lighter each time. And this is not the final step. We're gonna do some more. It's Benson painting. There'll be about eight to 10 billion highlights per level. Obviously, when you're at home, you can you can step up faster if you want. That's gonna create a more poppy looking model, which it looks better on the table, in my opinion, from a distance. But here we're gonna show you all the really slow steps up and get the best looking model you can. And it's this will look really, really, really good close up. And good on the t it should still look good on the table, but because of the lower contrast, I feel like it doesn't jump off the table as much. And here he's mixing a little bit of crushed skull. As, as I mentioned before, as I alluded to, um, when you're mixing in a much lighter color, so now we're going almost white, and that's gonna really jump up the brightness of, of this, this mix. So just a, just a dash of whites mixed in with the two previous colors, about 10% of what it is. It's now obviously getting quite difficult to measure percentages because what you want to do is make enough paint of the previous color that you can then just add a splash of white and then lighten it up a little bit more. And then there'll be another highlight where you add a splash more white to that color. Here we go. So now you just, it's almost a third of each now, a third of elf green, a third of goblin skin and a third of white. And that, this will be the final highlight now. So you can see he's making very, very small strokes on the very most raised bits. So that's the bones in his toes there, just along his pecs as well the edges of his fingers, 
and any part that would be sticking out the most from the model, you're just catching this final highlight, just adding a little bit subtle detail, but it makes the skin look so realistic and so, so good. Having said that, still think it was a bit too dark to begin with for our liking. It's just quite a dark model. I, maybe our houses just aren't lit well enough. This looks, unfortunately, looked quite awful. It didn't look awful. It didn't look amazing. The paint job was great, but it didn't look very good at Benson's house in his lighting, which was really weird because we were a bit disappointed when we were looking at it. Brought it back to my house where I've got bright white LEDs in nearly all of my rooms, and he just looks so much better. So it's interesting. It's like you can never win it. I've had this discussion before like when we're painting for on camera. It looks you paint so differently to how you want it to look on a table from a few feet away. So if you're ever disappointed with something, try looking at it in different lights because <laughs> as it turns out, it makes a big difference. Claymore blades out, that's the light silver in the new uh, in the in the Black Plague set. And that's just to highlight up all of the metals. So all those plates that he painted, the base coat is just going around all the edges of those and just edge highlighting essentially. His helmet as well, just on the top of that where the light would be hitting. He's then going to use just a splash of abomination gore and poke him in two eyeballs in between his little helmet holes for his little peepers to peep through. The next colour is going to be leather brown. Just highlighting up those straps, that little patch of leather he's got on one of his arms. He's got some rope on his other arm and then just a belt as well. So basically painting them thin lines, edge highlighting on the on the uh, straps, not the straps, on the patch and edge highlighting along the top of the belt and then just paint back in those ropes. He's going to use dead black. So that's from the modern day set, uh, zombie side set. There wasn't one in the new set. So that's a little bit weird, but I feel like everybody should own a black and a white. Doesn't matter whose you get, but those are colors are really, really useful. So that was Benson finished. And then I said, what about the war paint? It seems that people keep missing out on the war paint. I've had a few conversations about this and people just haven't even noticed it's there. But it's very, very obvious to me in the artwork. So Benson's going to use Crush Skull and he's going to go around and just mimic the artwork and copy in all of that war paint. So this bit's looking really, really good. And this makes the skin look so, so much better. So do big up Benson if you've enjoyed this video below. I think he's done a really, really good job. And this is actually quite a tough model to paint based on our color choices. We sort of made it more difficult on ourselves just using the brand new army painter set, I think. Maybe this green was too dark. Maybe it looks good. Everyone's got a different opinion on it. Everyone sees things differently. So let us know in the comments below what you think. To try and mix up that immense amount of green though I, I it's now back at my house this is me hopefully you recognize my hands now and i'm adding some glistening blood that's by the army painter it didn't come in this set but it is come in their previous sets and they sell it individually and then i've just painted in some blood where he's ripped off his nail and i've had that blood pouring down his hands in his other hand i painted it as though he's throttled somebody or squished somebody to death and then i'm going to do something i've not done on the channel before i've only done this once before ever and i'm going to use a toothbrush to splatter blood all over him. So I'm going to put down some serviettes just to try and catch some of this blood because it might go everywhere. And then I'm going to dip my toothbrush. Well, I say my toothbrush. This is not my toothbrush, guys. My toothbrush is in better condition than this. But this is a toothbrush that I've got for this purpose. And I'm just going to flick blood, pulling the bristles back and splattering that blood all over from his hand, up his chest, and just getting a little bit everywhere else. And then you're going to be covered in paint if you do this. Unfortunately, because I couldn't quite see behind the camera, I applied more blood than I wanted to, which we'll see in a minute. I think if I'd have stopped on the second flick, it looked absolutely amazing watching the footage back. The third one was just a little bit too much for me, but again, everyone's personal preference on blood is going to differ. Some people might just want to soak this in blood. Some people won't. It's created quite a fine mist on his front, so it does actually look like he pulverized somebody, which is quite cool. And then on his back, I was just painting in some hand-drawn cuts, which make him look like he's taken a bit of damage. Obviously, you're in complete control of what blood you want to add. Add as much as you want, add as little as you want. My personal recommendation is I got it spot on, except the blood splatter on his chest, covered up some of that war paint, which made me a little bit sad. Anyway, that is him completely finished here. You can see he's done. Took us about two hours and 10 minutes for this model. Uh, it wasn't too bad given his size and that's a lot of skin highlighting, trying to make him look really, really good. And I think by the end, he does look really good. That is him in a bright white LED lighting and I think he looks absolutely fantastic. This is the first time Benson will be seeing it in, in 
inverted commas, good lighting, and hopefully he's much, much happier with how he's come out. With that blood, he really stands out at a distance now and he's gonna look great on the table. Let us know what you'd like to see next from Green Horde, and thank you all very much for watching.